Well, Ethos Water to date has made grants of $6.2 million, and we've helped 420,000 people uh, across Africa, Asia, and Latin America to get access to water, sanitation, and hygiene education. I would never have started a water company unless it was about a mission. This wasn't necessarily an industry it was that I was so interested in. It was a passion that I was interested in, and I think that I believe that that passion could provide people hope, and I believe that it could provide them information, and it could create a new space in the market, and that they needed this. Seattle. And so it was that commitment to a mission and that belief in a mission that helped me survive seven years of negotiations and two and a half years of not making any money and getting to that meeting with Howard. And I think it was the mission of Ethos that Howard believed in and that's so aligned with Starbucks' guiding principles that the company is a company that wants to be a great provider of employment for people, that gives stock options to all of its employees, that gives health care to all of its employees. And so Ethos fit very well into that. And I think that that's been a good addition to their brand. Well, I was, I was working in, uh, in London in 2000, and I got a phone call, and I got an invitation to come work on a project for a client down in Cape Town in South Africa. And it was raining outside in London, and I thought, it's summer in the wine country in South Africa. I, this is a pretty easy decision. And uh, the experience turned out to be very different than I thought it would be, and I ended up spending a lot of time with very poor people in South Africa who were customers of this company. and. Um, the problem that struck me the most was that a lot of the women and girls spent almost all of their time looking for water to drink, to cook with, um, to live their lives with. And I saw people living in poverty and their streets had sewage in the middle of them. And The development conditions didn't really make sense to me because I, you could see all of the other development programs that were being put forth for these people in education and uh, uh, provision of health care um, and efforts to provide them not only housing but electricity and at the same time if we don't have water you don't build a house in this country the blueprints have pipes in them we figure out first where are we going to get the water and that solution hadn't been provided and so I saw that huge problem and when I came home to the UK, I started researching the problem and found that it was huge and my next assignment uh, was to go work for a bottle of water and soda manufacturer. And so as I analyzed that market for the customer, I, I realized well, on the one hand you've got all these people, a billion people who don't have access to clean water and more than two and a half billion people who don't have access to sanitation services and then on the other hand you have probably 500 million people buying bottled water in Europe, the United States, and the wealthier countries of Asia. These people have a need. They want to get easy access to convenient water, sometimes that gives them some kind of emotional benefit. But what if there's an intersection where those two people, those two markets, if you will, there's something there where I can create a, a business, a, a brand platform, to take their demand and help them, and help the people who are buying this to understand this huge problem. Uh, dry season, there's no adequate water, so it is pumped, as she says, because there are too many people. Actually, this is only meant between 100 and 50, maximum 20 or 50 people, if you are well designed. So, if a thousand come to collect water from this one, for a shorter period, it definitely dries, because it doesn't have a, what we call a permanent recharge. Who want to go? Okay. Do they remember who built them? Was it the government or an NGO? Okay. Kwanza, if you receive a video on a nanny, I would have fallen for it. Well, it is a good thing. Baribaro, you are a good thing. 
and I've got three additional new ones from the GC Council to put into their wells. And, and now none of those work. <laughs> Thank you for welcoming us so warmly. Thank you for your songs and for bringing your village and your your people together. And uh, we appreciate uh, the opportunity to meet you and uh, look forward as well to the end of this, uh, the completion of this project and to the provision of water to your community. You can recognize and think that they, yeah, especially mothers, they should be now grateful because they will be no longer going up the mountain to collect water there using those uh, big, uh, Dead cans or tanks. So, so cans. Yeah, that those cans. So they'll be getting water at the nearest point. <laughs> and that's all. God may bless you. We also, through the negotiations with Starbucks, increased the amount of money that we could give per unit by 260%. And so, all of a sudden, we went from donating $10,000 to a project to donating a million dollars to a project. Personally, I just recently, actually Monday, launched a new nonprofit called GivingWater.org. And I did that because I saw that when we invested in water programs around the world, we might invest a million dollars, but there would be a school that didn't have water on site. And so, even though Ethos is extremely successful, I'm still working on starting new things. I'm working on some ideas for new ventures as well. Every venture starts with one person, one idea, and ultimately one customer. Maybe you have a global company at some point, but it's always one person and one idea to begin with. Well, Ethos Water to date has made grants of $6.2 million, and we've helped 420,000 people uh, across Africa, Asia, and Latin America to get access to water sanitation and hygiene education. I would never have started a water company unless it was about a mission. This wasn't necessarily an industry it was that I was so interested in. It was a passion that I was interested in, and I think that I believe that that passion could provide people hope and I believe that it could provide them information and it could create a new space in the market and that they needed this. Seattle. And so it was that commitment to a mission and that belief in a mission that helped me survive seven years of negotiations and two and a half years of not making any money and getting to that meeting with Howard. And I think it was the mission of Ethos that Howard believed in and that's so aligned with Starbucks' guiding principles that the company is a company that wants to be a great provider of employment for people, that gives stock options to all of its employees, that gives health care to all of its employees. And so ethos fit very well into that. And I think that that's been a good addition to their brand.